Hi, I'm Jeff, a product specialist here at Redcourt Software, and I'd like to show you some of the exciting new features in Virtual Time Clock 15. There are a number of enhancements related to your time clock security. We've added electronic time card approvals for both employees and managers, and we've built in a new payroll approval dashboard that makes processing payroll at the end of the pay cycle the easiest it's ever been. Virtual Time Clock 15 encrypts your database, so if somebody was able to get a hold of your time clock data, they wouldn't be able to access it. We've also implemented encrypted network connections for our Virtual Time Clock network users. This will make your time clock data safe from prying eyes. But the feature I'd like to show you now is the new password rules. So we're going to head to Configure and then Security. Here you can select whether users are allowed to modify their password, whether their first or last name can be used in their password. You can set a minimum password length. You can set whether passwords are case sensitive. And you can require strong passwords. Strong passwords must meet a number of criteria. They must be at least eight characters long, contain an uppercase and a lowercase letter, a number, and a special character. Let's enable strong passwords. If one of the new password rules will invalidate your administrator password, you'll have to update your administrator password before changing the rule. Now I can go back into security and turn on strong passwords. If the new password rule will invalidate any of your current user passwords, you'll get a list of those employee names. If you're using the in and outboard interface, the users will be prompted to create a new password the next time they use the program. If you're using the PIN or a passcode interface, then you will need to create a new compliant passcode for them. We've updated the password warnings within the user's control panel to make it easy for you to spot which users need updated passwords. We've also added the same password warnings to display group configuration. Next, I want to talk about electronic time card approval. We're going to go to Configure and Payroll Settings. There are three options for electronic time card approval. You can allow hourly workers to approve their hours worked. You can allow salaried workers to approve their paid leave hours. And you can allow managers to approve time cards for hourly and salaried workers within their group. Approval is simply a way to document that the time card has been reviewed. Hours will not be processed until a final review has been completed by payroll staff and signed off. Let's turn on hourly worker time card approval. Now when an employee generates their time card, they will have an approval header that states their electronic time card accurately reflects all hours worked and they were provided with all meal and rest periods except as noted on the time card. Even though you've enabled electronic time card approval, you can still require employees to print out and sign a hard copy of their time card. Let's approve this time card. If any of the hours get edited on the time card by the employee's manager, or the employee adds new entries to their time card, their approval will automatically be removed, and they will need to re-approve their time card. Next, let's turn on Manager Time Card Approval, and I'll show you how that interacts with the new Payroll Approval Dashboard. I'm going to log out of my administrative user. And log back in as a manager.
the payroll approval dashboard will automatically calculate all regular overtime and paid leave hours for the current payroll period. You can review and approve the time card for each employee individually by simply selecting their name and clicking View Time Card. You can quickly add missed punch times or make corrections. You can send a message to the employee and you can approve the time card. If you'd like to approve the time cards all at once, simply click the Approval button. From the Payroll Approval Dashboard, you can also open your messaging mailbox, and you can generate time cards in a batch. Finally, you can generate a payroll report. We'll talk more about this report in a moment. Now I'd like to walk you through the steps of payroll approval. Payroll approval is what you do when you're ready to review time cards, generate a payroll report, export the hours to a payroll program, and close the payroll period. The payroll approval dashboard will automatically calculate all regular overtime and paid leave hours for the current payroll period. We've already discussed how managers can electronically approve employee time cards, but electronic time card approval is not required to process or sign off time cards. After reviewing and approving time cards, the next step is to sign off time cards. Sign off indicates that the time card is finished with edits and is ready for payroll processing. Again, I can sign off on each time card individually, or I can sign off all time cards at once. Now it's time to run the payroll summary report. The payroll summary report provides a permanent record of all hours worked for the payroll period. It's grouped by hourly workers, salaried workers, workers with no hours for the payroll period, and workers with time cards that have not been signed off. I can either save the report as a PDF, or I can print out a hard copy for my records. Next, you can export a specially formatted file of employee hours that can be imported into several popular payroll programs. Payroll integration can be set up by going into Configure, Payroll Settings. If you're not set up for payroll integration, you can still print the payroll report for a listing of employee hours for entering into your payroll system or calling into your payroll processor. Once all hours for a payroll period have been reviewed, the payroll summary report printed, and employee hours exported, the payroll period should be closed. Closing the payroll period will automatically advance the current period's starting and ending dates to the next payroll cycle based on your payroll settings. Hours for all workers must be signed off before closing the payroll period. You can still view time cards and payroll reports from prior periods by clicking the calendar icon. These are just a few of the new features in Virtual Time Clock 15. For a complete listing of all the new features and enhancements in Virtual Time Clock 15, please visit us at www.redcourt.com.